Project. I'm going to be hooking up an ice maker. The line's already here. And we've got our dual angle stop here. The quarter inch feed go into our ice maker line. And we actually have a separate valve for the ice maker line. Not 100% sure whether any of this works. I'm going to be hooking up the ice maker line to the fridge, which actually already has an ice maker installed. So, hooking up the line, I'm going to need to pull the fridge out carefully. Flooring here just going nice and easy. And back here we've got our line. And the line you can see there has been has been soldered off, which makes me think that possibly that valve, that secondary valve, does not turn off all the way. So just to make things a little uh, less likely for any surprises, since I'm gonna need to cut cut the line, I've got my tubing cutter here. Uh, I'm going to actually turn the water off down below at the angle stop itself. And we'll reconfigure everything once I got it kind of hooked up here. We will need to let some water out of the line once we get it hooked up anyway, but I'll get to that later. Now we've got the water turned off. Go ahead and jump back there and get this going here. What I have is some compression fittings, some Teflon tape, compressor wrench, my pliers, all kinds of fun to get the job done here. I might bring a rag back there as well to catch any water that may be in there. Okay. Now, I'm going to position this where if there is water in here, I don't want it to drip on the electrical cord. And just to make this safer, I'll actually go ahead and unplug it. That way the fridge is not going to plug in because we're going to need to get behind there anyway once we're ready to hook up our water line. I'm going to trim this off here, right about here out of dip. And this cutter, just rotate around and then tighten it some more as I'm ready to. Oh yeah, good thing I turned off the water. I had good suspicion there that uh, that was the situation. At this end, you can use some sandpaper to sand this end off. I actually was able to take it off with my pliers. Take some of the tape off. Like so. Okay. And now we're ready for our compression line. So I'm really glad I turned the, the water off first. Valve. The other side valve actually was not working at all. Now what I have is some little compression fittings right here. And this has a little ferrule nut and the slip side. And here's the ferrule. And that's ready there. And then on the other side I'm just going to add some Teflon tape. Mostly to make it easier in the future to take this off if we need to, but also just to kind of seal any irregularities there might be between the material. But again, mostly it's just for making it easier in the future. Three or four turns with the threads. We'll do it there. On the other side, the tape isn't as necessary as I've got a more standard compression fitting. Now on this end I've got my crescent wrench. We'll use this to 
hold our deal here and we want to make sure this is slipped on and held on as far as we can get it and that looks like it so I'm just going to maintain pressure here as we turn this all the way on in order to tighten it down there and it should pinch that deal nice and tight there. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of bend that back up. And I hope I didn't bend that too much. I don't think I did. But it feels like it's getting weaker at that point. If that's the case, I may have to, to bring that back more. Anyway, on this side we've got our new line here and this side doesn't require the tape again I'm going to hold this side Someone's kind of pulled this back. I would have actually preferred to undo the nut here. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. This, it might look like just cardboard, and it is just cardboard, but it does perform a function. So I really don't want to damage that. But anyway, we're going to pull this little blue cap off right here. This is just a manufacturer installed cap to keep any contaminants from getting in there. And now we'll just thread on our fitting. And in theory, we're ready to make some ice. Seems like. Finish tightening that on there. And they didn't leave me much room, did they? Just enough to get it done. Even that suspect. set there and now I'm going to go ahead and turn the water on and leak check everything. My uh, main concern is actually back here for a possible leaking water as this was bent. I definitely felt it give a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the water on. I'll keep you focused here and I'll turn the water on below at the angle stop. thinking about this a little further we do actually want to dump a little bit of water from here so just to clear this line this line has been sitting for so long that dump out some water so what I have is a is a cup here I can actually undetach this line even though I hate to.
but it's a good idea to cycle this water out. And also, once I do get this going, it's also a good idea to not eat any of the ice for about 48 hours. Oh, it does have water behind it. Looks like the line's already open. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off at the angle stop itself again. I didn't have to open this one. It looks like it was already open. So I've got a nice new angle stop here. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and flash it here. Probably got some water behind it. Anyway, that was all the water. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open that line, the angle stop, and drain it into the cup here. I'll just fill up the cup and I'll turn the angle stop back off. I'm just turning it on. And it looks like that valve is not really open all the way. So I'm gonna need to open that valve more that's under there, the secondary valve. But at least we'll get to drain out any water that was, I mean, this has been trapped in that copper line for, for so long it hasn't been running water through there. So it's gonna be a good idea to run some water. And I'll go ahead and turn it back off at the angle stop before my cup is full. Okay. Now I'll empty my cup of water here. Back underneath here. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. All the way if possible. These are very prone to, to breaking, so be aware if you're touching anything here that hasn't been opened in a long time or closed in a long time, be prepared for it to break. It may be, you may get more than you bargained for there. Okay, anyway, that line's open now. And I'm going to go ahead and, again, refill my cup with my line back here. And I'm going to open the water line as I do that and kind of monitor it. And that actually seemed to turn off the water. It looks like I went the wrong way here, but it's good to know. So I'm going to undo this, and that's definitely a lot more water coming out. And so <laughs> it's uh, definitely got some sediment in there. I don't think you want that in your ice. Again, we're going to close that. We'll just keep cycling this out until it comes nice and clear. But wow, look at all that sediment there. Again, I'm going to open the line and I'll just keep cycling this out here. Well, before I do that, I'll continue to open this line the rest of the way so that we're at max here. Because I also want to make sure that this isn't leaking or anything when it's at its max. Okay, and now I'm gonna open the line and we'll flush this out some more. Oh, and it's nice and strong. In fact, I better turn it off. There we go. Go again. That's full open. And that's full closed. And we're getting clearer water now. So that's good. One more round.
Okay. So now we've got that all set. We're going to come back here again and put this up to our water line where we want it. And as seen before, I've got the fridge unplugged, so it's much, much, much safer here. And with this, we're just going to go until it's a quarter turn past tight. And we're good there. And we'll go ahead and turn the water on and we'll check for any leaks. Here, let's turn the water on. And this is full blast. Okay. Going around down here. There's just some moisture left over, but I don't think we have any leaks. And we're going to check back there for sure. In fact, I'm going to jump back here and just kind of try everything off and do a field test. Okay, right here. Oh, everything's nice and dry. Right here, nice and dry. Good. And then right here, again. Feeling around. I had some moisture down there already, so try to dry it off with my semi dry rag here. Anyway, no leak there. We're good. Just reset my screw and we're all set there. That's how to set up an ice maker. Now we'll just want to wait 48 hours. Inside the machine, we'll be able to move our ice maker down, our harvester, harvest bar down. Right there that'll turn the ice on and as the ice fills up once it reaches its full capacity it'll turn off but anyway there's turning the harvester down we're ready for some ice and some ice making action here's my nice new ice maker got my first little round of ice uh, going just checking up on things at the end of the day making sure we have no leaks and everything's good just doing a quick kind of field test and verifying that nothing's leaking on us. Don't need any surprises. It's nice when everything works like it's supposed to. Again, for the first 24 or 48 hours, we'll go ahead and throw away the ice that's made just to make sure everything is nice and clean and nice and fresh. Okay, so we got our ice here and uh, we don't want to eat this ice, so definitely going to dump this ice. Uh, the nice thing about ice is it's good for clearing the grinding ring on the garbage disposal. So I'll get this down the disposer here on my nice 8 inch deep sink here. Well, it's not mine, but somebody's nice. Here. And I'll run the disposal. It looks like so it looks like something's up with my disposal. I'm not sure if it's in the switch. The reset button here was not tripped. Check the breakers and those are okay. Um, or if it's in the disposal itself. I can... All right, there we go. Now we can enjoy the ice from here on out. That's how to hook up an ice maker on a fridge that has an ice maker installed. Good to go.
Thank you.